What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today we are at the third episode of the project phase change cooler, the mini phase change cooler, the one you see here. This time we have a Ryzen 7950, so the big one. And you will see the behavior of the boost, so I'm going to let the CPU, let's say, overheat a bit and then bring it down to negative temperature. You can see the, the scaling of the cores under stress, of course, and then I will bring up the temperature again to see uh, the difference uh, going up uh, and the scaling of uh, the frequency versus the temperature. The CPU is not overclocked, just uh, using the uh, normal PBO. And so you can see how the, cooling, the, how the cooler is important uh, for uh, a, a CPU like this. And then I'm going to show you Tomb Raider, how is going to react uh, to a cooler like this. So you will see in gaming more than six gigahertz uh, to all the core interested, and it is very cool. But now let's get straight to the point. The video I'm going to show you is lasting around 13 minutes, but I'm going to speed up to 20x, uh, of course, because uh, we don't have 13 minutes watching the CPU die of heat. Anyway, uh, the starting point is 95 degrees because uh, I've turned off uh, the uh, phase change. So you will see now from 95 degrees, uh, we will go around 7 degrees uh, in the package under load and you will see the frequency that is now 4.4 more or less raising to 5.8 and then i will shut down again the phase change so now as you can see the temperature is going down you can see the the, the thermometer is now at negative 20 negative 30 and the cpu is now more or less at uh, 9, 8, 7 degrees, and the frequency is pretty much stable at uh, 5.8. So now here I'm not using any manual overclocking, just the precision boost overdrive with plus 200 megahertz of over boost and uh, the cool optimizer at negative 10. So it's only about the CPU reacting to the temperature and it's pretty nice. Now, as you can see, I stopped again the phase change, the temperature is rising, the frequency is slowing down, the voltage is like 0.5, and now the system crash because, of course, I let it die by heat. Of course, the system is not died yet because it just shut down. I've restarted the, the phase change and the system is up and running again. And it's pretty cool. For this test, we are going to use the function that is called dynamic OC switcher. So in this case, because uh, I will be sub-zero, I can push 1.35 volts and 57 of the multiplier for the two CCX. So we can sustain 5.7 gigahertz all core during our blender test. And this is possible only because we are sub-zero or close to sub-zero when the, the system is, is doing the test because you will see some spike above uh, zero. But anyway, this is of course almost impossible with any conventional cooling. Okay, so now we are at negative 38. It's a bit higher than usual because I had to charge a bit of gas since this is a very powerful CPU. So I had to charge a bit more gas and it means that I have a, a less peak output for the cooling, but it's more stable. So you will see that we will go, I think, negative 33 will be the top uh, of the temperature. And of course, uh, the uh, compressor is doing much more work. Uh, so instead of like uh, 140, more or less, we have now 200 watt in idle, and it will probably go out, go out uh, to 240, something like that. This is the consumption of the system. This is the consumption only for the chiller, for the cooler. So keep in mind that the whole system is this plus this one. As you can see now, we are going with the regular boost, the regular PBO. So we have, a, a, let's say, a top uh, frequency of 6040. That's 6 gigahertz, that is uh, enough. But when I'm going to start the benchmark, so now, you will see that the 
dynamic uh, switcher will start be effective and as you can see we have 1.30 and something 38 and we have a fixed multiplier at 57 so we're talking about 5.7 gigahertz uh, all core under bench under blender benchmark so it's a pretty heavy rendering application and this of course is impossible with a traditional cooler so as you can see here we have more power consumption from the uh, compressor and the temperature is now at negative 33 at the evaporator so inside here here we are at 16 degrees because this is the inside of the cpu in the hottest zone inside the course so is that normal that the evaporator is at negative 34 but the inside of the core of the cpu is at 15 positive because of course there's a lot of heat inside and it's not easy to transmit all the heat to the evaporator even though if it is at negative temperature but now you will see that when we finish the benchmark this number will drop very quickly to below zero again to equalize with our evaporator and well it's pretty impressive that uh, with just a couple of clicks in the bios and a very powerful cooler we can have 5.7 in rendering that is a big thing uh, because uh, the other generation wasn't that uh, good i mean i had to go with liquid nitrogen to go uh, at this level of frequency so I remind you that the results of this particular benchmark with this configuration with a normal water block with an only one is 622. So now, look, 686 is a 10, 15% more or less of improvement. That is pretty impressive because doing 64 points here, yes, we're talking about some a bit more than 10%. Just by cooling the system down, of course, this is unusual cooler, but if you have this cooler integrated in your chassis, something that I'm going to do, well, it's like 10% of performance in rendering just like this. Okay, so now I am at 1080p. The graphics setting is high and I'm using RTX DLSS just to avoid being bottlenecked by the GPU. So as you can see, we have uh, negative 36, uh, 37 with the evaporator, 220 for the uh, cooler and 457 for the entire system that is due to the 270 in the GPU. So now, as you can see, we are going from 250, 300 FPS uh, and the CPU, especially in the CCD1 where the work is, is... Uh, easy at uh, 6 gigahertz and most constantly and well this is pretty impressive because i just enable pbo with plus 200 megahertz a curve optimizer negative of uh, 10 and yeah we can play at 6 gigahertz uh, with ease in this configuration and the cpu the gpu is not even starting bottlenecking yet so we are really pushing really hard uh, this uh, cpu and it's pretty cool all right, so what did we learn today? Well, that a system like this, so the 7950X combined with a phase change cooler, even a small one, can be a pretty nice rendering machine because uh, we was able to gain like 10% with a couple of clicks in the BIOS and of course the merit is all from the cooler. Pretty interesting. Uh, on the game side, yes, we were at six gigahertz and so on, but uh, uh, is not that uh, we have a big gain because uh, I can boost as well on liquid cooling around 5.96 gigahertz. So uh, the major improvement we saw was in the all core boost uh, doing heavy stuff. So uh, probably with Ryzen and gaming, this is not the best cooler because uh, even if I discharge a bit and I can obtain a hundred and something watts of the power consumption for this cooler is not really effective as a gaming machine but as a rendering machine well uh, the results speak for themselves so probably if you do like uh, i mean like a lot of rendering and you want a system like this 
this probably makes sense because with some more watts, of course, but you have like 10% in rendering, that, it, that is a big thing. But uh, anyway, I think this system is more Intel oriented because with Intel, we can max out the frequency and get the benefit in high frequency FPS gaming. But uh, with a system like this, it's more like rendering because we can sustain a lot of uh, high core uh, rendering frequency. And in gaming, the gain is low because even at 6 gigahertz, uh, the, pre the, the CLK, so the infinity fabric frequency, is the bottleneck of the system. So I'm pretty sure that if I hook up the other cascade phase change and go down to negative 10, uh, negative 100, sorry, and I can go like at 6.5 gigahertz, the results in gaming will be pretty much the same as this one. I will probably do that because uh, I have there the cascade change and maybe in the next days I will, can try to do that. But uh, I'm pretty much sure that uh, even if you can push, push forward the frequency, we are limited by the bottleneck on the Infinity Fabric. Anyway, I hope that this video is was interesting to you. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one.